Hello and welcome to my Killing Floor 2 SDK tutorial. In the second part, or this part, I will be teaching how to make use of the static meshes. So, start off with open up the content browser in one of the many ways. I had to click on the content browser option there, or clicking Control Shift F, or by going View Browser Window Content Browser. And just so you know, I do have a second monitor, so I actually like to have the content browser on the other monitor and control it from there. But the thing is, you can't see it, so I'm going to move it over here whenever I make use of it. Make sure you have the static set opened up all the way. And let's get started. You'll notice um, there's three groups of different colors. Greens usually mean ceiling, blues are floors, and orange are walls. Let's start with floors. Uh, if you go, if you expand it and go to base, Let's select the single floor because that is the very basic of floors. A couple ways you can put the floor into here. One way is right clicking, go to add static mesh, and whatever you have selected will appear there. Or you can just drag and drop. The problem with dragging and dropping is it shows up wherever it wants to. If for some reason you don't see it, try looking around or press W because W actually hides all the static meshes and if you're using WASD option like I am then it causes plenty of problems <laughs> like hiding and unhiding anyway this way uh, the very first piece you put down I would recommend zeroing it onto the coordinate system as in make it smack dab middle of the SDK map area so either right click go to static mesh actor properties or just click F4 and it should pop up um, and if you go to the movement tab you can click zero for all the options and it will appear right in the middle I press W again uh, if you don't want the builder brush option here you can move it out of the way or as I do I click B and hide it from view. Okay, so with the static mesh, a uh, couple things you can do with it. If you hold the Alt key when you have the navigation mode on, you can see the translation mode or the rotation mode or the scaling mode, or you can click spacebar and it'll cycle through those three and when you have the translation mode on if you hold the alt key when you drag it you will create a copy of it it's very handy I use it a lot so so alt key will duplicate if you hold the control key as you click you can select multiple items or meshes and what I'm doing is holding the alt key when I'm dragging and it will select all that. Another option is if you want to select with a marquee hold control alt and you can make a marquee selection and whatever it touches it will select. So here I selected all that and time to duplicate that so hold alt and I had to think for a moment. And I duplicate it. Okay, there we are. So here's our floor layout. Um, I should recommend not rotating the floors at all. If you find that the floor is not facing the right way, find another one. Because if, let's just say, you wanted one of the corner pieces and you realized, hey, this one's not facing the right direction. So if, for some reason, I drag it onto here and I go, oh no, I wanted it to look like this. I am 
I'm going to rotate it. No, don't do that with the floors because these are all positioned in such a way so that when you put a modular texture on there, um, it blends perfectly with everything around it. And when you rotate things, it does not blend and you will see the seams in between them. So if this one doesn't work, find the other one, find this one and use that instead. Don't rotate this one. Same with ceilings. Okay, uh, a couple ways to put walls in. Again, it, you could have the first you select the wall, go to base, find the single wall, and select that. Uh, you could drag and drop it, it creates a wall. Um, you could right click and go to add static mesh. Or here's this other very useful option, and it's more useful in other circumstances. But what you do is you copy this, paste it again on top of the floor, and then you replace it with the wall. To show you what I mean, I'm going to click Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and then you right click, go to replace with, and make sure you have single wall selected here and whatever that is will show up at the very top. When you select that, voila! What it basically did was, see this is the only floor here, when you replace it with the wall, that's essentially what it does. But the pivot point for the wall is where the pivot point for the floor is, so that's why it lines up like that. I'm going to undo that. But if you may notice, when you put the walls in, and if you're very finicky, you notice, hey, it isn't lined up all the way to the back. You know, you want it to be lined up all the way. But for offsetting purposes, or for reasons which I will get into later, they don't go all the way to the back. So for now, just ignore it. And let's fill all this with a wall. And so what I was doing was control clicking to select all of them and then alt dragging. To duplicate. And what I would recommend is if you can read the text, that is the correct direction of the wall. If you can't read it, then that's the back side of the wall, and that's the side that will be invisible when you are playing. So if someone, if we put a texture on the front side, then the back side would actually become invisible and transparent, and it'll feel like an invisible wall. So for that reason, I am going to rotate this around. Okay. Also, if you hold Alt when you rotate, you actually duplicate it while rotating. So, that's really handy. Why do I keep pressing W? Oh, because I'm using WASD. That should have been obvious. Oh, man. Okay. I'm going to rotate that. Alrighty. So now we've encased the entire area with walls. And if you may notice on the inside here, corner looks all right. Oh, now let's make some interior walls here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is select these and Alt drag them in to create another wall. Oh, I didn't control click. Anyway, so now you have a bunch of walls here, and if you notice, like I said, if the letters are backwards, this is the back side of the wall, and it will be invisible when you actually put textures on it. So I would suggest adding another wall behind it. So when you drag it in, it might look like that. 
so basically this is what your wall will end up looking like so there will be this space there and that will add thickness to the walls and allow you to have a wall with different colors on both sides things like things of that nature so to answer the question mentioned earlier about why there's a gap this is your reason why it's so the walls have thickness and so it will be automatically 16 unreal units long and speed up the process. I'm actually going to copy these here and move them down over this way to create that wall here. I'm going to do the same thing with this for this wall. The same thing with this one. Okay. Okay. So it looks pretty good so far but you may notice hey what is, what's up with this why is it in this corner you know they aren't lined up all the way well that's because of that offset so to handle corners if you go to the content browser go to walls the static mesh and if you go to corner you have the option of choosing whether if it's corner in or corner out so what we'll have to do is with this with these two pieces it's an outer corner but with these two pieces it's an inner corner so what we have to do is replace these with the proper wall that is adjusted to account for the offset when they meet at that corner so I'll go to base and you will notice there's a corner in and X negative and X positive. Um, so I'm going to select the corner in X negative because this is the X negative side and this is where the corner is. I'm going to right click, go to replace with that and it will show hey there should be a corner here. Yeah, let's do the same with the corner in what x positive replace with there and it looks super suave they are now no longer whoops click w again they are no longer overlapping just like the other corners here I think you'll notice there's some overlap well it ain't there on this one anymore super clean now let's do the same with the outside walls so with the outside wall so outside corner base select that one right click here replace with the X negative go over here with that one replace with that one Okay, we got a nice looking corner here on the outside. Certainly looks a lot better than what it used to. Da -da -da -da. Okay, so now we just got to do it to all the corners, including these right here, because these don't look too good. Well, it looks all right, but. So, what I'm going to do is select the outside X positive corner, go to all of them. So, I'm selecting and then control clicking okay and then right click replace with that X positive so now all of them all those have that sweet so this is when I find having the second monitor very handy but so to corner out the other angle control click and that one I already did control click replace with that so now all the outside corners are done let's uh, keep going then 
drag it in, corner it in base. So I'll go with that one. So that would be this piece, that piece, that piece, and that piece, that piece. Replace with that corner. And now with these pieces, is that it? Okay. And we go to the other piece here, select that, then right click, replace with. There we are. We got nice looking corners now. Okay. So that should explain a lot about corners and walls and floors. I'll see you in the next video.